speaker is Dr. Bin Su, who is a famous neurosurgeon, uh, and he have experienced a lot of microsurgeries and bypasses surgeries. He's our work in the Fudan universities in China. So please, Dr. Bin Su. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. You need to enlarge, so, there you go, there you go, perfect. Okay, okay. Uh, so today I will talk about the treatment of posterior respiration aneurysms from uh, our host, Huashan Hospital. So in our hospital, most of the posterior respiration aneurysms was, uh, were interventionally treated, just uh, like uh, Professor uh, Vakro presented, and the only distal ruptured PECA or echo aneurysms uh, were clipped. So this is uh, un unruptured, some uh, illustrated cases, like this is uh, case one, ruptured vertebral dissecting aneurysm. We can see the dissection, the double lumen sign on the left side, we can see, and um, so we treated uh, uh, with a uh, stent plus coils and uh, it can be treated perfectly. So this is a basal tip aneurysm. Uh, also can use uh, stent assisted coiling and that gets the perfect result. Another case like uh, uh, this is a uh, basal tip and uh, uh, actually, it's on the PCA, P, uh, P1 uh, segment aneurysm. Also use, uh, it's a rupture that you can see the daughter sac on the uh, dome of the aneurysm. And we use uh, uh, stent assist coiling to achieve the uh, perfect result. And this is a P1 to P2 aneurysm and still use uh, stent plus co coils. And this is uh, another uh, vertebral uh, dissecting aneurysm. We can see the double lumen uh, sign on the three dimension DSA. So this is a double layered stenting. And uh, the f uh, long term follow up is uh, very good. So this is uh, another uh, uh, ruptured thin and the flat ruptured vertebral artery aneurysm, we can see the dome was very flat, but it's ruptured. So it's also a di dissecting aneurysm. So we use uh, stent plus coils and uh, achieved the very good result. So only some distal PECA aneurysm uh, is not a fit for the uh, interventional treatment, we will perform the clipment. Like this case, a female patient left a vertebral distal pica aneurysm. So different uh, projection, and then we can see the aneurysm was a uh, have two domes. So we use, this is a, a incision of the dural and the, you can see it's a ruptured one. The exact uh, dome of the aneurysm was uh, larger than the uh, in the DSA because there's some, uh, it's partial thrombosed. Dissecting the two domes of the aneurysm.
you can see some uh, nerve fiber. attached to the dome of the aneurysm. So temporal clips, the proximal uh, part of the pica, then separated the, the dome, attached to the cerebellum very tightly. because there's two domes, so it should be clipped separately. It point to the different direction. because there's some uh, dog air. So I change the position of the clip to clip the aneurysm. So this is a Doppler, should the proximal part and the distal part of the pica was all patent. So after one week, we follow up the ESA, you can see the result is quite good. Okay, thank you. That's all. Okay, Warlocks. Are you there, Warlocks? Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Taking a nap. <laughs> we caught you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I, but I'm listening now. Okay, so I okay. have a question from the floor now. No question. It's complex. No, there are. They'll, they'll come. They'll come. Okay, questions okay. or comments? Go ahead, you have to treat these complex aneurysms of vertebral system. It's hard contact sport. So, whatever you are doing, so you are not sleeping your nights well. This is my experience. Mm -hmm. You will have surprising complications and uh, initially good results, but then suddenly big despair and poor outcome. In, in my experience, when I treated with a sacrifice of the bacilla, never have a later complication. But when you treated the patient with flow diverter, you are many times follow up complication. My thinking is also that the proximal occlusion in this case is the best treatment. So it is the, so this coming from the young Richai Benham Yahromis PhD in the 519 other sclerotic monstrous vertebral bacillar aneurysms is the, is the uh, is the 
conclusion that the proxima occlusion, slow proxima occlusion is the best treatment. So at least this atherosclerotic canal should not, should not be treated by many stents and vascular because you have the poor outcome with that. Also with biopsies, you will have poor outcome. So I think the best treatment will be the slow closing clip with development of the collaterals and preserving the perforators. So these are different, different ways or different type of this anorus. So it is a general disease, atherosclerotic disease, of course, but also, also very, very, uh, the patients are extremely sick. And so you have to be careful in treatment, treatment of them. So I think it is easy to push a lot of stands inside, but you will be disappointed. What do you think uh, a high? So I, I think the, for this, for the basal trunk, we have to be very careful, like all the panelists are saying, to differentiate what kind of an underlying disease are we dealing. You saw from our cases, and I see that when I proctor here or I help colleagues who deal with that, is that there is a group of patients that are atherosclerotic diseased vessels and on top of that they develop this monstrous aneurysm that's a, a biologically a completely different disease so what we see with these patients is they have a large clot burden in the aneurysm and it creates a interesting substrate for vasa vasorum and you saw from professor hernesim i i'm sorry that i don't pronounce your name properly you so it's I'm okay. Sorry. It's okay. Better than you have all, all around the world. <laughs> okay. So Finnish is a very difficult language. We know that. So, so what we have found out and where we would need a help from surgeons is the technicality of endovascular treatment is not the problem. You get the aneurysm closed. You, it looks angiographically beautiful after a year or two. And still the aneurysm is growing. It keeps growing and creates a mass effect. And there are very few surgeons who are willing then to shave off the, the, the occluded thrombosed part of the aneurysm like a tumor. You can do it. There is a colleague in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, who does it. There are some colleagues here in Boston who do it with the same approach that Professor Hernesim was showing us through a pre-sigmoid approach to decompress the brainstem. And that's where I think the value would be in combined approach. Again, flow diverter for those aneurysms, very minimal approach, less metal, keep them on dual antiplated anticoagulation for a year or so, but somebody has to then remove it like a tumor because what you said very rightly, Luis, there are these little collaterals, we don't see that even angiographically, that maintain the biological growth of the aneurysm itself. And that's our challenge. The other aneurysms like we saw, saccular, fusiform aneurysms in a younger population, they are easy treated by, en by endovascular. Again, important thing is we keep the patient on anticoagulation, tight regimen, frequent control, whether it's MRI or CTA, but that's a different disease. They are younger people, sometimes female ratio is, but the older people with this aortic like disease is completely different. And there we are very reluctant. If a surgeon doesn't come to me and says, I will help you later, I wouldn't treat those. I agree. But, but I thought, for example, one example, patient with 80 year old arteriosclerotic uh, aneurysm. Uh, the picture of angiogram is very feasible to flow diverter, but the clinical symptom is not important. I think it's better to survey this aneurysm and not treat it because sometimes the flow or wherever you want a device is possible to change the the flow in the in the basilar region and the and the aneurysm growth. I think 
is important the clinical symptom of the patient and the side way is probably the best treatment is not treated the patient in some of the case because I don't have at the moment the technical. I think uh, the, the clip, uh, Hernes Niemi clip is, uh, uh, is, is a very improved method because as is, I remember of the, of the garrote of, uh, of Drake technique of the Charles Drake technique with the basilar artery close progressive close. I think it's, it, it's important to, 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 to wait to the, 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 new, the new device to treat this particular type of aneurysm. I totally agree that there are different types of vertebrasial anorms. So the other sclerotic anorms are a totally different group, like the Professor Vaklu said. This is a totally different group. This is a general atherosclerotic disease, and you have to be very careful in treating that. And I, th I don't think, the, I think the message should be that you should not push coils or stands inside these anorms. This should, should be the message because they are, you will not have good results with this treatment. And it is like uh, Louis said, if an 80 years old patient has that kind of disease, it is better not to treat in any way this case. Just congratulate, you had a long, good life, and then uh, we continue with this disease forward, but not no attack on the others because you might have extremely bad outcome and deaths. As a result. And one question to Professor Ahai, also being sure. What do you think when you have a patient, young patient with a blister, like an in basilar, vertebral basilar region? What is the, the best? Because the problem to the stent is the anti platelet therapy. What is your management? Uh -huh. I'm not sure about the diagnosis of the uh, crystal like because the posterior circulation, how can you tell this is a crystal like aneurysm? Mostly it's a uh, dissecting aneurysm, and we treat it like. Uh, uh, I prefer to use like the uh, Elvis uh, stent. Uh, the metal cover rate is around 20%. So uh, combined with the coils, it can achieve the, the good result, but not so high density to cover the perforators. Do you have experience of a spontaneous resolution of this type of aneurysm? Mm -hmm. A spontaneous evolution and disappear the the, the anevris. You don't have a case? You know this possibility? Is sometimes it's possible this. See the patient survive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's possible. And what do you think about uh, Professor Wadlu? So what we have done is we have blister by definition are aneurysm that are ruptured. So like you said, Luis, the problem is the anti-platelet therapy. So we have translated our experience from the anterior circulation where we use single or uh, two overlapping stents, uh, like uh, Professor Bin Shu is saying, and we have achieved good results. The problem is that the aneurysm angiographically disappears, but a few days later, patient may re-rupture and they generally don't survive. It's low rate of re-rupture is probably around 10%. Um, the experience is very limited, as you know, from the literature. My own experience has been in the basilar also. I showed you a perforator aneurysm. We have some blister aneurysms. I try to stay more conservative. I try to bridge the first few days if we can do and don't do any treatment because the thromboembolic complications in the early stage of ruptured aneurysm is very high because the body adjusts with a hyper response in the clotting. 
And that's something we need to consider. So when you, if you can get the patient the first few days out of the worst situation, and then come back and do the placement of a flow diverter or a stent, it's better. It's better, it's safer. Now, if you can do surgical wrapping, which is very difficult, I'm sure, in this in the mid basilar or distal basilar. Um, so we talk to our colleagues and we, like I said, we wait three, four days and then place a flow diverter. Again, single device, small device, short device. Uh, and then it's safer to put the patient on dual antiplatelet. That's how we do it. But the risk is high of rebleeding, of course, it's not insignificant. Professor Hanenyemi, what is the difficult to treat it the uh, aneurysm is localized in the ICA superior cerebral artery amplification. Is difficult? Surgery technique? Yeah, what kind of aneurysm? Sacula? Sacula. Sacula. Yes. Uh, Sacula you can manage well. Sacula aneurysm you can manage well. I have not seen basilar dissecting aneurysm. These are not in no, our experience. Sacula, sacula. Sacular, sacular. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I was just saying that I didn't see any basilar trunk dissecting aneurysm. They are dissecting aneurysm in the uh, pica, pica, in the vertebra, pica, pica, proximal or distal in the pica. This were dissecting aneurysm. But I have not experienced any basilar trunk dissecting aneurysm. So the sacular can be treated very well by clipping, whatever at a mid basilar trunk, pre-sigmoid approach, or some people are doing doing Kawase approach to this anorus, but you can you can grip them well if they are sacular. Hmm. Okay, I, I believe Danu, Danu, welcome from Indonesia. I believe he has a question for you, huh? Danu, can you yes. go ahead? Go ahead, Danu, welcome. Thank you very much, John. It's Danu. been a pleasure and an honor to be here. I am Danu from Indonesia. I have uh, one question for Professor Juha. Considering your uh, enormous and uh, many, many experience year after years, I was uh, wondering how was the aneurysm clipping surgery by the earlier time when uh, CT angiography was not always available? Uh, is it possible to do it? Uh, considering uh, we don't have the luxury of CT angiography in every hospital in our country. Uh, so by looking at the, for example, we have uh, SAH and we can see the pattern of the uh, SAH and the ICH, intracerebral hemorrhage by the rupture of aneurysm. Can we uh, guess the, uh, the aneurysm and we can do the surgery? Uh, I made, I clipped my first aneurysm in 1976. So that time it was uh, angiography until 2000. Then we began to use CT angio because we had excellent picture with CT angio. We didn't have any more DSA in Helsinki for direct um, surgery. So I don't, uh, you have certainly DS, DSA, angiography. DSA angiography, not in my hospital, we don't have it yet. We only have this. Uh, but then, we, then, then you should, uh, when you have CT, then you can easily achieve CT angio to this machine. So this, it should not be so difficult. You can have that kind of uh, the computer system. So it should start uh, technicians. So it, it, it should not be difficult. To, it's not too expensive and you can add to CT angio to the, the regular CT, but with regular CT, you cannot operate an aneurysm. I have done with uh, hematomas, or, uh, but uh, you should not do microsurgery without precise goal that the aneurysm is. If you have even bad pictures, if you have, if you know that there's MC aneurysm or a calm aneurysm or carotid P calm aneurysm, then you can do surgery, but you should have CD angio. Or if you don't have DSA, then it is very difficult to do, uh, do uh, uh, microsurgery. You, this is like to go back to 1930s when Dandy B 
began his aneurysm. So without angiography, he did with the oculomotor paralysis, you can do, and it has become aneurysm. But uh, this is seldom that you can find the aneurysm. Or try to achieve CD angio. It is not so expensive to have this extra in your CT machine. Yes. Which you, city you are? Which city you are? In Jakarta. Jakarta. I, yeah. Uh, you went to Jakarta when I was resident in uh, University of Indonesia, Jakarta. I saw you in work on Jakarta. You have high-level neurosurgical institutes. Yes, but I have. <laughs> I work in other hospital, and uh, the the principal of the hospital uh, asked me to develop the neurosurgery. Uh, facility in the in my hospital where I work now. Okay, then achieve good angiography. CT angiography is not not very expensive as added to the CT machine. Yes. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Professor Wakro, so according to your experience, uh, how often is the uh, uh, dissecting aneurysm posterior? Circulation, because you know, in in our hospital, it's quite uh, normal, uh, especially in the three dimension uh, aneurysm reconstruction. We can find the typical double lumen sign, so we can say this is a uh, dissecting aneurysm. But uh, uh, Professor Yuha said he he didn't see any dissecting aneurysm of uh, basilar trunk. May I comment here? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. I think in China you have huge number of atherosclerosis. So this is uh -huh. coming from the male smoking and both genders, fatty food. So you have huge number of atherosclerosis. So then you might have a dissecting and also in the basilar tract. But in Finland, I have never seen. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, Professor Bichu, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, Professor Binchu, I think that you make a very good point, and so does Professor Haneshim. The thing is that I think it the dissecting aneurysms are focal, that certain regions in the world see more, like in Asia. But mm -hmm. I have seen a lot of dissecting aneurysms in our practice here. Generally, dissection of pica, dissection of the junction between the origin of the pica and the VV junction. And frequently these patients present with subarachnoid hemorrhage and it may be not evident immediately uh, on the angiogram. But like you said, if you do vessel wall imaging with short TE times and contrast and you do fat suppression, you will see <clears throat> the point of dissection in the wall very nicely. Uh, so most common, like, uh, like uh, we were discussing, most common locations is the Vi Pica VB junction and basilar trunk. We have also a whole group of patients that have dissections from distal basilar into the PCA, P2 segment, P3 segment dissecting aneurysms. And our policy has been in the past to take down the artery when we can. So the best thing is either endovascular surgical takedown of the segment that has rupture. If we cannot do that, like Lewis showed a case where <clears throat> you have the anterior spinal artery coming or whether the anterior medullar segment is involved, then it's safer probably to use coil whenever you can or use a stent or a flow diverter <laughs> to overcome the dissection. But we see a lot of dissection that remain also asymptomatic, except that the patients had headaches. So basically contained dissection with narrowing of the artery or fusiform dilatation. But some of the patients present with a three vessel dissect, three layer dissection with a subarachnoid hemorrhage. But I think dissection is more common than we believe. And you are absolutely right. Maybe more in Asia. Yeah. So uh, how about the indications? Uh, because uh, if you found some patient with only a uh, headache and uh, with uh, dissecting, would you treat it? We follow them up. So if there is uh -huh. no subarachnoid hemorrhage, we put the patient on antiplatelet treatment um, and then follow them very tightly with imaging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're on mute, Luis. 
Okay. Some patients in my uh, in my experience experience come from player golf. Yes. Ah, be careful. Player golf is the is the origin is the origin of this dissection. I have some patient with bilateral dissection. And the key point is discussed is some patient don't come to hospital in acute phase, going to the rehabilitation or traumatologist. And some patient when you check with CT scanner, don't see the, the, the bleed. Also, also, it's possible the, 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 the neuroradiologist not, don't study well the, the basilar, vertebral basilar junction on a CT scanner or angio. And finally, sometimes it's very small and the only right possibility to the diagnosis is the 3D angio, conventional 3D angio, because it's a very, very small lesion of the wall. This, this is probably the reason with in, in Europe or USA, you are less to China, but the case normal is, is less to arteriosclerotic, but with the player golf is not, uh, <laughs> I have, I have. It's a comment. Well, one question for, uh, hi, it's important. What, I understand your presentation, you treated, you have a comment with the steroid. What is the paper of the steroid to treat it, this type of complex? So, so uh, Professor Hannes Niemi showed some cases of this dolichoactatic and these large aneurysms. And during surgery, when he opened it up, you see there's a lot of ataroma, but a lot of vasa vasorum also. So when we looked at patients that died histologically, what we find out is that there's an enormous, and I think the Finnish group, um, with Niemela and his whole research, I showed it nicely that these large aneurysms with huge clot burden have a huge activity around neutrophils and DMA cells. So they express a lot of myeloperoxidase, which is a toxic. So this myeloperoxidate upregulation creates an MMP, which is metalloproteinases, and those metalloproteinases destabilize the matrix of the aneurysm wall. So what they see is a lytic effect with breakdown of the vessel wall of this aneurysm. So what we have found out that could be learning from the other areas in the body that high dose corticosteroids may suppress some of the inflammatory enzymatic activity around the wall. Does it work all the time? No. Then the other thing is what people have been discussing is that there is a perifocal edema after placing flow diverter or coils that's generated by, by inflammatory response. And we have seen that in anterior circulation with giant MCA aneurysms, there's a huge perifocal edema and it keeps on growing. And with high dose corticosteroids, you can control them. It's more, I think these enerons are more like a tumor characteristics than really vascular disease per se. But I would love to hear your comments. No, I, I, I agree because the, 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 in, in, our in our practice, the neurologists don't like to use the Asteroid. I don't know why. The neurologist, the clinical neurologist. But the neurosurgeon, I like. I mean, I like. Why? Because the, uh, the, the mass, the mass effect and the mass bum, 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 bum in the world to the parenchyma 
is is really because you you see in the in the MR you image you are the some change around the energy. This is the reason when I think it's important to treat it before before and one week later in my in my practice just before. And uh, the neurologist I don't like, but I am endovascular uh, neuroradiologist. I, I think it's the same, the same um, idea of experience of the neurosurgery. One question for, for the professor Bin. What uh, you have in China, the uh, capacity to evaluate the, the flow inflow, outflow, or on flow with the image inflow in the aneurysm with the CT scanner or another method. You are the studio of the check the flow in inflow on the, in the aneurysm, no, or not only in the basilar region in general. Yes, we have some uh, NOVA system to where is uh, your, nature's uh, blood flow. You are a volume. comment. You mm -hmm. are a comment from this. Uh, no, 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 not not commonly use. No comment, comment. Uh, because because uh, uh, we performed the uh, DSA by ourselves. So normally uh, we can measure uh, the blood flow uh, according to the DSA presentation. So. If we need to measure the uh, outcome and the income uh, flow, we will use the NOVA system. It's a, in, uh, it's a MRI, uh, MRI uh, sequence. Yes. It's uh, designed by uh, Professor uh, uh, Chabert, Fadi Chabert. With MRI? Yes, with MRI. And, Sometimes and we we uh, we measure the blood flow for the bypass intraoperatively. Mm. Yeah, I think it's interesting to 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 check. <laughs> yeah, to, to check the the, the, the so, so you are you need to sacrifice one vertebral artery. Uh -huh. It's possible to check what is the secondary effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. With MR. Yes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Normally it's with CT and just CT, but. No, no uh, normally we will, uh, sometimes we will maybe perform some blue occlusion test mm -hmm. before we sacrifice it. The control, the, 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 the pressure level is important in the arteriosclerotic basilar aneurysm. You are a special management of the control of the pressure. How is the level to the old men or Chinese men? How, 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 you, how level you decrease the pressure block? How many it is? You mean the, the enhanced lung occlusion test? No, no, no. In, the, in general, in the arteriosclerotic aneurysm, mm -hmm. this classic aneurysm, a high blood flow present uh, this comment also is important to control the blood pressure. Pressure, no? What is, what is, do you we, think? We keep the blood pressure to the baseline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If so we, we perform the... Test. Sorry. <clears throat> uh -huh. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. If we perform the CEA, like uh, uh, today I have a CEA case, we were elevated the blood pr uh, pressure during the uh, occlusion uh, of the ICA. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, we do some uh, enhanced balloon occlusion test, we will decrease the blood flow, uh, uh, blood pressure uh, around 30% of the baseline, if the patient still can tolerate, you can sacrifice the, uh, the parent artery directly. Mm -hmm. 
How long? Half an hour? Uh, 30 minutes, yes. 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. AJ, you had something to say? Yeah, I wanted to comment regarding test balloon occlusion. Mm -hmm. So we do the same <clears throat> way. We, we, we reduce the blood pressure from baseline two thirds by using nicardipine and control it for about half an hour and do mm -hmm. SSPs and you know, evoke potentials if the patient is not awake, otherwise neurological exam. However, I have to caution everybody that you can pass, a patient can pass the balloon test occlusion and then you close both vertebral arteries, you achieve a very good result. Patient wakes up fine, goes to the floor and few hours later, the patient is completely locked in. I have seen that. We have to be very, very cautious. Young people being done other places, both vertebral arteries were closed successfully. Very nice posterior communicating arteries filling the they are very distally, and suddenly the patient um, gets locked in, and you do an angiography, and the whole whole basilar trunk is thrombosed. So we have to be very cautious how to really interpret this balloon occlusion in the posterior circulation. Anterior circulation is a different beast. In, yeah. The, yeah. in the in the posterior, in my experience, is the is the, the patient is 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 not the uh, general anesthesia, is it with the local anesthesia? With conscious and, sedation, yes. yes. And test the patient. The yeah. potential evocate is not true. And the, when I finish the occluded, both vertebral or the basilar, I put the patient with a high pressure, high pressure about two points or three points. And I stay with the, Radial, radial t uh, control, very, very important. And also, uh, the patient is by nine pin, and the nine pin, the problem is decrease the, the blood pressure, and this is the management of the of the intensive in care in in center. It's, it's complex. Yes, personally, I never sacrificed the both. But uh, but he brought to it. Yes, That's I right. have only I'm five. Side, yeah, yeah. No, no, five basil. Okay. Another comment, Juha. What do you think? Uh, I, for the atherosclerotic aneurysm, I would wait. Uh, Doctor Yahrom is PhD. He has a huge mother of five hundred nineteen cases. So we'll we will have new information. So I don't I don't want to speculate anything here about the pressure. So Dr. Drake used to have an interval between the vertebral artery occlusions. So first one side and then other side and then the low vertebral artery occlusions so, the, so that the collaterals were there through the, if you occlude the vertebral artery very low at the C1 level, then you have collaterals uh, then from the, through the muscle branches and they develop and then you might have better outcome if you don't occlude immediately in both vertebras at the same time. And you should occlude them low and nowadays you can occlude them endovascularly low. So you don't have to do any surgery, destructive surgery. I think this is the, this is the wise, wise approach. I, uh, those patients who became locked in, did they smoke? No, it was a young girl, fourteen year old. Was oh, not okay. like was somewhere okay. else where that was done, but it was a young, a pediatric yeah. patient. Okay, okay, we have seen that also, also at the sudden, sudden death. So. Yeah, it is, uh, like I said, it is hard contact sport, hard contact sport. So it's uh, difficult and we don't know everything now. So we hope to get more information and to get more wise in treating these cases. But the sacrifice of the vertebral is you, you sacrifice one time and the one week or two weeks later, you uh, close the, the another one. This is important. Yes, but, important too. but I have 
I remember one case in, when, I, when I work in Paris. Uh, I sacrificed a giant aneurysm of vertebral bacillar junction. Um, my, my professor, uh, La Junia, sacrificed this. Why you sacrifice the right vertebra and not the left? The question, my question is, why you don't sacrifice the choice, the left or the right vertebra? Talk me with the anatomy, blah, 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 blah. But the patient developed progressive growth, the anemia, after sacrifice one vertebra. I don't know why. To change the flow, be careful. Sometimes it's difficult to know where is the best or point to, to close or vertebral because the flow is possible to change to reduce the volume of anemia also to grow the anemia. This, this is uh, difficult to understand. I remember one case is complicated, very, very disastrous case. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Any more comments, questions before we close? Okay, I think a uh, great session. Uh, you uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you especially to the Chinese uh, neurosurgical community for coming. And Ben, I'd like to thank you for translating. Uh, again, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> You're uh, welcome. Uh, and thank you, AJ. Uh, for coming uh, early from Boston, uh, and Lewis, of course. Uh, Lewis, do you have uh, the schedule for two weeks from now? Do you, do you have? Uh, no, no. I, I, I like to. I think I stop to and uh, restart in Jan January. Okay. okay. Very um, good. I have a good uh, a good uh, for you. I think it's possible you come to Madrid in February. Oh, that, I would love that. <laughs> yes, but, I, because I, I tell you, I want to tell the audience. No, no, so you have, I, you have, I, I have, I have a special place uh, with uh, a small mafia, mafia neuro interventional mafia. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, good. No more than 12, 12, only twelve. Okay, twelfth of February. See, I think February or March is. Is is depend is not the, the the date is not important. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll let everybody know. It's a great conference. It's a real Madrid experience. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> I love I loved it. I, I went there a couple of years ago. It was fantastic. Uh, and I'd like to thank the audience for coming. And we have a neuroanatomy lecture uh, shortly. And you're welcome to come with Ipcherian. So uh, until next time, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, whatever. Thank you. Bye -bye. Awesome. Thanks. Happy, bye -bye. happy bye -bye, new everybody. Everybody. Yeah, happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> bye.